Tomorrow is January the 16th, which is known by many people as Blue Monday. Thought to be the most blue, the most depressing day of the year. Now the truth is that isn't true at all. In fact, Blue Monday is a it's a phenomenological non-phenomenon. However, January is a time when many people, particularly people here in Ireland, but also people in the many parts of the United States and Canada and the UK, people that live a long way from the equator, when people develop these kind of January blues, feeling kind of that they've got a touch of winter flatness. I meet people all the time as a medical doctor and, and they complain of these types of symptoms. In fact, uh, the evidence suggests that at least one in every five people suffers from a form of seasonal affective disorder and I like to joke that the other four out of five people are in denial because the truth is winter blues are very very common particularly in parts of the world that are far from the equator and you know there's some very good reasons for that the the long winter nights the lack of sunlight during the day uh, affects our, our internal body clock it affects our what's called our our circadian or our, our biological rhythms with the with the result that uh, our serotonin levels that's one of the happy hormones in the brain that allows you to feel more positive and more self-confident the levels of serotonin drop down on top of that you start to produce more melatonin and because you're producing all this extra melatonin you feel extra groggy and extra sluggish and in fact there's a whole spectrum of types of symptoms you can get if you're suffering from winter blues but typically people tend to feel extra tired uh, you know feeling tired all the time sleeping more uh, getting changes in their appetite particularly craving carbohydrates and not even feeling you know not even feeling full when you when you when you eat carbs not having that sense of you know satisfaction that we normally get after eating a meal so you tend to crave carbs appetite goes up and of course the result of that is you tend to pile on the pounds and you tend to gain weight on top of that you don't have as much energy as you did you don't have the serotonin giving you the motivation so the result is that i call it polar bear syndrome it's it's where you you feel like you're sort of you feel like you're kind of semi hibernating and of course at the more severe ends of the spectrum symptoms of seasonal affective disorder and you know i was talking to somebody recently and they asked me would i do a facebook live video on on seasonal affective disorder because this person really was suffering from it at the more severe end seasonal affective disorder can can overlap with symptoms of of depression where somebody may you know have have a very persistent low mood uh, loss of enjoyment of usual activities perhaps with a sense of hopelessness about the future or, or impact on their self-esteem or self-worth and certainly if somebody has more severe symptoms we would always recommend that you go and see your your GP or go and see your family doctor who will be there to help advise and support you as as appropriate so what can you do about the winter blues well you know I'm out here this morning it's a beautiful Sunday morning and I think the best thing you can do is get outdoors because you know sunshine is so good for us and even in in the winter days getting some natural daylight it does uh, help your vitamin D a little bit. Now, most of us in this part of the world, I believe, we don't get enough vitamin D and, and perhaps you should consider taking a vitamin D supplement because, you know, vitamin D is in, it's in oily fish and it's in fortified milk and it's in, it's in mushrooms and some other foods. But the truth is it's hard to get enough vitamin D in your diet. So you should consider uh, whether a vitamin D supplement may indeed be right for you. But getting outdoors, getting some natural sunlight, and that can support your vitamin D but it's just great to get out in nature you know I call it green exercise spending time outdoors is just so good for you because it tends to turn off your inner critic and uh, just gets you into that flow state where you can just feel better where you can just chill out and de-stress so getting outdoors I think is really really good stay connected you know there's a tendency for so many of us when we're feeling under stress or we're feeling a bit flat I mean, I, I call flatness. I think of yourself as being like a car, and the the air in your in the tires of the car is just a little bit down. So you're just a little bit flat. A little bit of flatness. We tend to often go back into our shell, and you know, I think the best thing you can do is stay connected. We are social creatures. We're human beings. 
stay connected with, with your friends. It's good to talk, tell, tell your friends how you're feeling and, sh and you know, a problem shared is often a problem half. So stay connected, stay in touch with your friends, stay in touch with those people that, 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 that matter to you, basically. I'm a great proponent of exercise. You know, I, I talk about exercise being the greatest pill of all. Not just for your physical health, but in terms of what it can do for that space between your ears, in terms of boosting your serotonin levels, bringing on more dopamine, which, which makes you feel more motivated, and more energized and more buzzed up, boosting your oxytocin, which makes you feel more empathic and more connected to other people, and making you feel more loving, you know, and just making you feel just more positive and, and boosting your self-esteem. And of course, exercise also helps to put stress hormones back in their box. It allows you to think, feel, and be at your creative best. And it even releases a miracle growth for your brain, allowing you to build new brain cells and grow new connections between your new brain cells in this process called neuroplasticity, whereby you can grow, change, and develop and adapt your brain right throughout your life. So, you know, getting, getting outdoors, uh, making sure you get your vitamin D levels up, staying connected with your friends, and exercise are key ways to stave off and support you with winter blues or seasonal affective disorder. And finally, you know, we're learning a lot more now about the power of nutrition and the power of eating a good diet. And, you know, a large percentage of your body's serotonin is actually produced in your gut. So eating foods that are, that are good for your brain health, and by that I mean foods like omega-3 fats, so omega-3 fats are in nuts and seeds and free-range eggs and kale and oily fish, uh, a little bit of uh, a little bit of dark chocolate. I also think with a high cacao percentage is very good for your mood. Drinking lots of water. 80% of your brain is water, so drinking plenty of water stays you to, allows you to stay well hydrated. So these are simple things you can do to beat those January blues, to allow you to think, feel, and be at your best. So. You know, I hope I've been of value this morning. Uh, if my message resonates with you, please share it with your friends or people you care about. And I hope you have a wonderful week. Thank you.